What is going on everybody and welcome to part 16 of Gary's Mod Game Mode Scripting. In today's part we are just going to be adding some functionality to our buttons and actually making them do something when a user clicks on them. But before we get into that, in our share.lua file, get rid of this include here. Because by the end of this part, this line will definitely be causing some script errors and get rid of that so we don't have those script errors. And in our seal init, we want to include the custom menu. So include custom underscore menu dot Lua. Save both of those, close them if you want to. Otherwise, go into your custom underscore menu dot Lua file. And let's start adding some functionality to these two buttons. First up, the player button. Underneath our paint function, let's go ahead and add this player button dot do click. And this will be equal to a function that takes in one argument, this argument being the name of the button that is causing the do, or calling the do click function, in this case, player button. And like any function, end it off. And we do the same exact thing with the shop button down here below the paint function, shop button dot do click equals function shop button. And end that. Now whenever this button's clicked, or whenever either one of these buttons clicked, it'll call whatever is between this function and end statement. So anything on, or anything in the body basically, it'll be called. But we need to add something between these, so we first need to create that thing. So, near the bottom, I'm gonna add some comments here, this will be the player panel. And then this will be the end of the player panel. So between these two comments, or just at the bottom if you didn't put the comments, you want to create a new empty panel, a new empty panel variable. I'm just going to call this panel in all caps. So this is equal to opening closing curly brace. And this will basically just create an empty panel. Next up, I need to initialize this using function panel. Since I want to initialize this panel, I need to call the init function on this panel here. So we need to prefix it with panel colon like so. So panel colon in it just stands for initialize, and this will just initialize the panel. And end that off. Now in here I want to use something called self. And self is just going to be set to whatever is or whatever this initialize function's in. In this case, it's a part of this panel. So self is basically just going to be set to this panel here. So you want to set the self colon or set the panel set size to 650, 475. And the reason for this is because 650 is just 100 minus the width of the whole entire menu. And I got that 100 because of the button here. So 750 minus 100 is 650. That's just the remaining space that we have. So 650 is there. And 475 is just 500 minus the position of the top border. And the top border that I'm talking about is, if we start up a new game here, the top border is just right below that game mode menu title that we have up at the top of our F4 menu. And if we get into game here, press F4, this border right here. So 475 is just going to be from here all the way down to here. Next up, the position, self colon set position. So this equal to an X position of 100. So it's to the right of this border here. And then 25, so it's right below that top border that I just showed. Next up, we need to paint it. So function panel colon paint. This takes in two arguments, the first one being the width, which I'm going to call W, and then the height, which I'm going to call H. And both of these are automatically set to the width being 650 and the height being 475. And this, and now I want to draw a rectangle, and I do this with draw.roundedbox. First value is going to be a zero, which is just saying that I don't want any rounded corners. I basically just want a rectangle. Followed by the X position, zero, Y position, zero. So it's in the top left, then the width, and then the height. And last but not least, the color of it. I'm just going to make this a black. So three zeros and 255 as the alpha. And then we need to register this. So I can actually go ahead and call this panel. So kind of like this, vgui.create, and I want to be able to create this panel 
by calling a string, kind of like I did with D button, but instead of D button, I'd use something like player panel. And we do this by doing vgui.register. Takes in three arguments, the first one being the name of the element, so player panel. The second one being what I want to actually be created whenever I call vgui create or one of the other alternative functions. And I want it to draw or create this panel which will have the size of this, the position of this, and it'll draw this rounded box. Next up, the type. This is a panel, so I'm going to put in panel there. And now, since all that's done, we go ahead and copy this, and we do the same exact thing for the shop panel. So I'm going to change these comments here, here, and instead of player panel, we want to call this one shop panel. And the color, so I can distinguish between the two, I'm going to make this all white, so 255, 255, and then 255. And I'm going to reload this. And now in our do click functions, we can go ahead and actually create the newly created panels below, or that we created below. And we do this with a variable, local player panel. Set this equal to menu, colon, add. And we want to add this player panel. This will basically just add this player panel as a child object of menu, kind of like we did here. And this does the same exact thing as these two lines, it's just going to do it in one line instead. So it's going to create the player panel, and then it's going to set the player panel's parent to menu. And again, that's just what this line here does. It's going to create it and make it a child of menu. Next up, we do the same thing with this local shop panel, is equal to menu colon add, then the name of the panel, in this case shop panel, because that is what I registered below right here. And again, this will add shop panel as a child object of menu. It'll basically make it a part of menu. And it'll create that and show it using this paint function here. So save that, go into game, press F4, click on the player button, you get a black rectangle, click on the shop button, you get a white rectangle. And keep switching in between, you'll keep getting the different alternating colors. And if you have that, it worked out well. So that is going to conclude part 16. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to look them over and answer them if need be. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.